What is up guys, today we're going to be talking about the 5 best Pixel phones that you can buy in 2022. We, I've got one for pretty much every price range from the older to the new one. So let's get started with the best that Google has to offer and that is the Pixel 6 Pro. I really like the Pixel 6 Pro especially after the January uh, update patch. They, this phone came out a little buggy but they fixed a lot of stuff it still has little things that i don't like about it but overall this is still one of my favorite phones and honestly though my go-to camera phone uh, that i use if i want to take any serious pictures uh so this has a glass back aluminum frame it has a really unique design as well too uh as soon as you see this phone you'll know that it's a pixel phone so that's one of the things that i really love about it very unique looking it's got a 6.71 inch ltpo amoled display 120 hertz hdr 10 plus it's a full 1440p display 512 for the ppi overall it's just a really beautiful panel color wise it does have a curve to it but i'm a big fan of the curve so um, you know, that's that, but uh, it does have the punch hole in the middle and overall just a very smooth feeling phone uh, Just a really nice screen in general uh, The great thing about all of these pixel phones is that they run pure stock version of Android So if you're a fan, you're really going to want to grab a pixel phone This is on Android 12. It will get updates extremely fast since it's a pixel phone So when Android 13 comes out you will get it very fast. This is running Google's Tensor chip and it's a pretty good chip. It's a very fast phone. I've never really had any issues personally uh, with speed on this phone. Gaming performance is pretty good on here as well too. You have the Mali G78 GPU. Overall performance was very good on here. Uh, you do not have any type of SD card support. 128 gigs of internal storage and 12 gigs of RAM on the base model, uh, which is really nice. This thing just flies through. Uh, multitasking it's able to keep a lot of stuff open uh, you do have very 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 good sounding stereo speakers I mean excellent bass quality uh, some of my favorites of uh, this year or last year uh, you do have NFC on here as well as the fingerprint scanner now the fingerprint scanner is the only annoying thing about this phone because there's no face unlock uh, so you're kind of stuck with this fingerprint scanner now it's not the worst that I've ever tried but it's definitely not the fastest and it doesn't feel like a flagship fingerprint scanner um, so it's one of those like tap and hold uh, you kind of have to do it perfectly to open the phone which is something that I hate so uh, that's that but uh, the triple camera setup is definitely the highlight of this phone I love the way photos come out I love the way skin tones come out on this phone uh, it's a 50 megapixel standard 48 megapixel telephoto 4x optical zoom and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide it has 4k 60 with 11.1 .1 megapixel ultra wide selfie cam that shoots in 4k 30 uh, like I said, photos just come out beautiful on this device here. Very uh, much detail, good dynamic range, excellent low light, great skin tones. Uh, it's just a phenomenal photo taker. So definitely one of my favorite go-to cameras. It does have pretty good battery life. I have uh, milliamp battery with 30 watt charging. You have uh, wireless charging at 23 watts with reverse wireless charging. Uh, so overall, the Pixel 6 Pro is really an excellent device, minus you know the little uh, you know hiccup after the launch. Next is the Pixel 6. So this is just the standard Pixel 6. If you guys want to see this phone, be sure to let me know. Uh, but this is an excellent buy because it's 600 bucks and you're getting a flagship phone with very little compromises. So uh, this one has the glass back, aluminum frame. It's IP. Uh, rated as well too. It's got the AMOLED 90 Hertz, so not 120 Hertz, but 90 Hertz is still very smooth. HDR 10 at 6.4 inches, 1080p 411 for the PPI. This one has a completely flat panel as well too, so you might really like that. And uh, this one has the Android 12, uh, but you do have the Google Tensor chip on here. It's the same Tensor chip in the uh, 6 Pro. Uh, which is really nice the same gpu setup and all that so uh, this phone is going to be a performance beast for 600 bucks it can compete with uh, the best of the best as far as you know the price goes now as usual no sd card support 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of ram perfectly fine that is more than enough ram at this price point uh, you do have stereo speakers which i'm assuming from what i've heard they sound just like the pixel 6 pro um, as well too. No uh, headphone jack one here. Of course, NFC is on board. The under the display fingerprint sensor, uh, from what I've seen, is the exact same as the 6 Pro, so it's not that good. Um, but the cameras, this is why you would buy this phone. The cameras are pretty much 
um, on par with the Pixel 6 Pro from what I've seen. It's a 50 megapixel standard, 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's a pretty much the same lens. You're just missing that telephoto lens. Uh, 4K 60, 8 megapixel selfie cam, shoots in 1080p 30. Uh, you're getting excellent image quality with the standard Pixel 6. So. Um, there's a lot to like about this phone. Plus, you get a pretty nice size battery, a 4,614 milliamp battery. It has 30 watt charging with uh, wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So, this is also another great phone to consider. And again, that price point for a flagship, um, you know, CPU GPU combo and uh, you also have flagship cameras on here it makes it very compelling buy all right so next we have the pixel 5a 5g this is a cheaper alternative is is a 450 dollar phone uh, so if you're not comfortable with spending 600 900 dollars uh, this is a very cheap phone and also offers still great quality performance here so we do have an aluminum frame and aluminum back on here this is actually a very solid feeling phone in the hand and it just feels really nice with a soft touch uh, finish that they have on here it's actually ip67 dust and water resistant it actually has an oled display it's hdr and it's 6.34 inches it's a really nice display it gives you really nice color uh the only minus to this is that there's no high refresh rate but honestly the phone still felt very smooth scrolling and doing all that stuff so um i was still impressed with just how smooth everything felt it's a 1080p panel 415 for the ppi uh, this is upgradable to android 12 snapdragon 765g adreno 620 performance wise on here uh, of course you're not going to get the flagship like performance on the 6 and 6 pro uh, but it gives you good mid-range performance so casually gaming and stuff on here uh, the phone feels way faster than what the chip implies so it just feels still like a a very smooth phone so that's something that i was always really impressed with with this phone uh no sd card support 128 gigs of internal storage six gigs of ram on board the stereo speakers sound really good on this device as well too and also um this phone has a headphone jack so also take that into note because um for people who are big fans of the headphone jack this still retains it which i was pretty surprised they did that uh, you also have nfc on board too the fingerprint scanner is physical and it's on the back it works extremely fast so i was really happy with that the cameras on here are still top quality i would say this is you know easily one of the best mid-range camera phones that you can get honestly uh you have a 12.2 megapixel standard camera then a 16 megapixel ultra wide 4k 60 video and then an 8 megapixel selfie cam shoots in 1080p 30. uh the photos come out really great on here tons of detail also really good dynamic range this does an amazing job in low light conditions as well too skin tones come out really well video is pretty solid I'm a big fan of the cameras on this phone, especially at this price point. I still feel like these are flagship quality cameras and a mid-range device for sure. Uh, so this phone also has very, very good battery life. And it could be thanks to them not putting a high refresh rate display in here. Uh, it's a 4,680 milliamp battery with 18 watt charging. Uh, it does a phenomenal job with battery life. You can easily get through the day, uh, no problem. I've never had an issue we're getting through the day with this phone um so the pixel 5a 5g is definitely a great phone to consider for those who are trying to save a little bit of money all right next is the google pixel 4 you guys would not believe me but this phone has come down dramatically in price to around 200 bucks for a older flagship phone that is absolutely crazy considering the performance of this phone it still does an excellent job and it does have a few things that i actually like so let's go ahead and get into it you have a glass back aluminum frame on here it's ip68 dust and water resistant it has a p oled display at 90 hertz it's hdr and it's actually 5.7 inches so if you're somebody that wants a smaller phone uh this is pretty small so i really like this phone i'm gonna pick up another one for the channel because this is just great for compact users man uh, you do have a 1080p display 444 for the ppi as well too and um yeah so i really dig the display especially at this price point uh this launched with android 10 so it will get updated to android 13 which is also really nice uh, it is upgradable to android 12 right now snapdragon 855 adreno 640 gpu uh, cpu combo basically this phone still can perform excellent as far as gaming as far as uh, in benchmarks it's still going to perform great the a55 is really 
uh, one of the best efficient chips uh, still uh, that uh, Qualcomm has released. It does uh, just an excellent job. Uh, you do have 64 gigs of internal storage and 6 gigs of RAM. So you might want to think about getting the 128 gig if you you know download a lot of stuff because that is kind of low for today's standards without you know any SD card support. You also have stereo speakers which sound amazing, tons of bass, just really excellent. No headphone jack on board. NFC is on board. This actually has the Face ID which I wish Google kept. Um, because the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro do not have any type of face unlock, so I wish they would bring that back. This has really good face ID. Uh, you also have on here still great cameras, a 12.2 megapixel standard, 16 megapixel telephoto. The complaint with this phone is there's no ultra wide, so just take note of that. Uh, but you do have the telephoto for 2x optical, 4K video, and then an 8 megapixel selfie cam. If you can get over not having an ultra wide, this still takes really great photos. Uh, very good skin tones, good detail, good dynamic range, good low light. It's still going to give you that really nice pixel image processing. Uh, the battery life on here is actually okay. It's not extremely impressive, but it's a 2800 milliamp battery and uh, 18 watt charging with wireless charging. Battery life was just, you know, it was just okay. You can definitely get like six hours of screen on time out of this phone. Lastly is the Pixel 3a XL. Uh, you can find this for easily around 150 bucks if you go on eBay, uh, most likely on Amazon too. I'll have all the links down below. This is a really great phone for anybody in that hundred, you know, fifty dollar price range. You're not trying to spend a ton of money on a phone. Uh, this one just has standard plastic design. It actually has a six inch OLED display, really great colors, uh, 1080p resolution, 402 for the PPI. A bit of bezel, but you know, overall, I really like the display. Uh, it is upgradable to Android 12. I really like uh, the Android 12 update performance-wise. has been really nice on this phone, so they fix a lot of the sort of performance problems that this phone was having on the initial launch. Uh, you do have the Snapdragon 670, Adreno 615, mid-range chipset still, so you know don't expect anything crazy. It performs still uh, pretty well for casual use, gaming, uh, you know, YouTube videos, multitasking. It does a fine job with that. Uh, you do not have any SD card support, 64 gigs of internal storage, 4 gigs of RAM. Pretty good sounding stereo speakers on here. This does retain the headphone jack. You also have NFC and then a fingerprint scanner rear mounted. Uh, works really well. And you also have a pretty good camera setup on here still. I really like the cameras on here, especially... I don't think you're going to find a better camera for under 50 bucks. 12.2 uh, megapixel standard, but that's the thing. It's the only camera on here. So there's no ultra wide telephoto. Uh, it's 4K video, and then you have an 8 megapixel selfie that shoots in 1080p. And uh, like I said, image quality is still really good on this phone considering uh, the price point. So this phone also has a 3,700 milliamp battery, 18 watt charging. Uh, battery life is pretty decent on here. I can get through a day. Uh, battery life on this phone so this is a really good super cheap uh, option for you guys to check out so thanks for watching this video and i will catch you guys in the next one